Texas A&M and South Carolina, the coaching turmoil bowl, Shane Beamer doing everything in his power to self-destruct and blame everybody else in his program for what's going on. This is a very difficult schedule for South Carolina. They now have to go on the road as a two touchdown underdog against Texas A&M who, while they are coming off a bye and is rested and has better personnel along both lines of scrimmage and is at home is also self-destructing with Jimbo Fisher. I, I have no idea what to make of this game. Texas A&M is a pretty heavy favorite. There are implications, Stephen, for both coaching staffs pretty heavily. I don't think Shane Beamer's on the hot seat yet. I think two good years of football has put some equity in the bank there, but it, he is eroding it quickly behind the scenes in South Carolina. They have the better quarterback. What, what do you make of the matchup between Texas A&M and South Carolina? The line of scrimmage is is clearly heavily favored towards the Aggies. Yeah, I think first of all, I think for like season goals and, and coaching purposes, I think it's important for Jimbo Fisher to win this one, uh, considering some of the hot seat buzz. And then on the other side of things, uh, you know, Shane Beamer in South Carolina, the last two years have finished the season fast. So I think if you're South Carolina, you're kind of counting on, you know, we've caught fire the last two years. And so maybe this is the start of that. You've got a quarterback in Spencer Rattler who could get hot on the road. And we saw Alabama go into college station and throw the ball pretty well against Texas A&M's um, defense and secondary. I think the challenge, though, for South Carolina is what you mentioned. It's the line of scrimmage. And I think it'll be another game where Spencer Rattler is probably going to be scrambling or needing to you know, run around quite a lot because of the edge that Texas A&M has there. So I think if you're South Carolina, uh, the line of scrimmage is where you have struggled this year. That's going to be the biggest challenge on Saturday, trying to navigate a very good A&M front and then offensively uh, and defensively can you you know match up against Texas A&M too. Miami also torched that A&M secondary, so you can get those guys in space. Xavier Leggett could have a big game this weekend against uh, Texas A&M. Up. South Carolina's that's weapons true. have been banged up too, that's, so true. that's something to keep an eye on. The, the Bonham Trophy, of course, at stake throughout the records when these two get together. Uh, I find it interesting, like all the things that we would have said about South Carolina under Shane Beamer the first two years, all the things that you would you would sort of make the case as to why he's very good and why they've overachieved is all that Beamer ball stuff, which I know is a cliche from his father, but like it really is. They were making great decisions in game. They were managing the situations really well. Special teams were a big part of their win over Clemson and Tennessee last year. Like they just sort of do all the intangible stuff really well. The first two seasons under Shane Beamer, that's all the stuff that Texas A&M has no freaking clue about. So like, if you're trying to make the case for South Carolina, it's if you get back to doing the Beamer ball thing, and managing all these situations extremely well, unlike anything Jimbo Fisher has done this year, at the end of halves, at the end of games, that's what Shane Beamer is supposed to be really good at. So if you've got the better quarterback, and you can make some plays down the second, down the field into the secondary, and you can manage the game and the details of the game better, special teams, fourth down, clock management, etc., then I think you can make you you can Texas A and M is nothing special, but I do think Jimbo Fisher needs this one pretty bad Spencer Rattler was sacked six times last year last week against Missouri he's been under pressure all season nine times by North Carolina I think A&M dominates the line of scrimmage and wins the game easily but I I want to see I want to see the, the the extra stuff that South Carolina is supposed to have this is a game where it could play a major role because Texas A&M is totally lacking in all that stuff it did it did in last year's game too in Williams Bryce yeah. you know they started off with the big kickoff return um, I think if this game was in South Carolina like A and M could be walking into a trap because you'd have a, a potentially a very motivated yeah. South Carolina team if it was a night game, but I think on the road in College Station, given the fact that the the matchup of A and M's defensive line against South Carolina's offensive line is very one sided, and I don't you know from a we also see South Carolina can't stop the pass they've had trouble against the run, there's a lot of issues here. I think Carol South Carolina's best chance of an upset is Spencer Rattler just has a huge day. And to your point. They manage the game. They get a turnover. Maybe they make a play on special teams. That's the path because on the field, every matchup favors Texas A&M. Sounds a lot like the Tennessee game last year for South Carolina. The difference is that was, of course, in williams Bryce. So we shall see. Keep an eye on this one because both coaches under a lot of pressure right now for a big win. So this is one of those games that we thought might have mattered in the summertime to, to the races in the East and the West. Largely irrelevant, but you can bet it's extremely important to both those coaching staffs right now uh, as they fight their way through the second half of the season. So I'll take A&M. At home, line of scrimmage, Aggies win. Gig them. Give me Texas A&M as well.